Welcome to our third and final podcast for this unit, just for this unit, don't get too excited. We are at the top of page eight and we're going to be talking about the last kind of, not difference, this is all still definitely stoichiometry, just addition, extension that can happen. If you've noticed in all of our reactants, okay, let's write the definitions because you're not listening to me, um, on the page, what is a limiting reactant, okay? We have two reactants. What I want you to remember in this section, remember reactants to form products. So we are talking about reactants on the left-hand side. So that's going to be kind of your focus, and it's a key way to tell what kind of problem you have. So a limiting reactant means it's going to be the one that gets used up first. Now, today we started looking at activity and realizing not everything is always in a perfect ratio. And sometimes you are going to use up something first, and the reaction is going to stop. So a key thing is it's going to limit it because when it's gone, it, the reaction is going to stop. So you're going to not be able to make any more product. Okay, if you've noticed in most of our um, problems, we've always said sodium reacts with excess chlorine. That's telling you it's not a limiting reactant problem. If you ever see a word excess, that something is in excess, that means it's not a limiting re um, reactant problem. But what the excess reactant is, it's the one that is not used up, or it's the one that you have left over, or there's too much of. So however you need to say it, that makes sense to you. Just recognize we're looking at two different reactants. If I have both quantities, you're going to have to figure out. So this means that there's a little bit of work before the stoichiometry. Or and sometimes you just really have to do the stoichiometry twice to see which one is going to make least amount of product. So some, um, again, my hamburger, hope you're not hungry, analogy. So here again is the same basic recipe that we started all this stoichiometry with. So if I have five hamburger buns, how many hamburgers could I make? So five hamburger buns, I could make, this would make me five hamburgers. Okay, if I have 10 hamburger patties, well, that could also make me five hamburgers because it's two patties per burger. If I have 10 slices of cheese, yay, five burgers. And if I have 12 slices of bacon, well, here is my recipe. I need four slices of bacon for every one. So if I only have 12 slices of bacon, and if I have 12 slices, so what would it look like? Well, I know that I need four slices per burger. I could only make three burgers. I would run out of bacon first, therefore I would say that my bacon is the limiting reactant and everything else would be an excess. The nice thing is you won't be having to deal with four things at a time, only two. So how do I know if it's a limiting reactant? You have two givens. You're going to be given two values for each reactant. You're no longer going to see those magic words um, given in excess, that you have excess of the other reactant. I mean, obviously on the test, you can still have some excess. Not everything is always going to be a limiting reactant problem. That's why you have to kind of tell, how do I know it's going to be a limiting reactant? So let's just kind of start looking at some of these. So I have six moles of barium chloride and are placed in five moles of sulfuric acid. So look at what happens here. We're going to start easy, just kind of look at the concept with moles. Barium chloride, that's a reactant. And I have also sulfuric acid. That's also a reactant. So I have two givens. That's how you can know. Now notice it's not one of the products like a percent yield problem. They're both reactants. Usually it's also going to ask you questions like what's the limiting reactant and what one are you going to um, can't, what are you going to um, run out of. Okay, over on the left hand column, what I want you to start with, what we're going to first look at is a one-to-one -one ratio. And if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, sometimes you can l use logic. 
we're going to show you a couple different ways to solve these problems because not everybody sees them the same ways. You do this one that makes sense to you. So I, like I said, we're going to show you a couple different things. Now, you can use the logic, but the logic you need to remember, you have to have moles. You need moles to logic it out. So if it gives me grams of each of these, I want to just use logic. But if it gives me moles, we can use logic. So what do I mean logic? Well, I know that this is a one to one and I get out one to one. So this is saying one cup, one cup, I need equal amounts. So look at what I'm given. I have six moles of your barium chloride, so I wrote it underneath. I have six moles of that. And what do I know? I have five moles of your sulfuric acid. So I need equal amounts. So what's going to happen? Well, five moles is going to get used up. You're going to react all five moles. We'd even say kind of subtract out that amount. What's going to happen here? Five moles is going to be used up because how do I know? Well, remember it's a one to one ratio, equal amounts. So what happens then? You'll have no excess sulfuric acid. This is how I know that your sulfuric acid is the limiting reactant because you ran out of it first. And look at how much am I going to have in excess? Well, you have to know how much was used up. So I have how much I began with, how much was used up. So you're going to have one mole in excess. So you have one mole excess barium chloride in this reaction. Okay, so that I can kind of figure out just by looking at it. Well, then it says, well, how many moles of excess reactant remain? Oops, sorry, we just answered that right there. So how many moles of precipitate? Okay, this is your solid. This is your precipitate. We will tell you that. So it's also a one-to-one -one ratio. One thing to do stoichiometry, you always have to use the limiting reactant. Always use limiting reactant in stoichiometry. Okay, so what this means is same thing. I'll just extend. So I know I'm using my sulfuric, so I'll need one mole of barium sulfate for every one mole of sulfuric acid. This is sulfuric acid that reacts. Or you could also have logic seen that you get the same amount. So I would produce five moles of barium sulfate. Okay, so let's look on the top of page nine. Over on the left hand side, ask yourself, write yourself a question. Okay, well what if it's not, it isn't one to one? How do I solve a problem? So we're going to start looking about what if it's not a one to one ratio, which I know that that means ratio Okay, what if it's not a one-to-run -one ratio? Okay, what do you need to do? The easiest way, react both reactants. I could show you something that you do a ratio and compare, but the reality is just react both, ratio, both reactants. See which one makes the least. So which makes the least amount of product? The least amount of product is the limiting reactant. Okay, so look at this problem. Again, this is identify the limiting reactant. Hint, ding, 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 it's a limiting reactant problem. And the moles of excess remaining after the reaction is completed. Okay, typically let's add something else and say also calculate moles of product because we're always going to ask you that too. So, and I just forgot to type it up. So look at what I have. Three moles of oxygen with three moles of, oh, excuse me, three moles of aluminum react with three moles of oxygen. Okay, first thing, what do I have? So if you go over here, I have so many wants, that's why we kind of, you can list out, what do I need to know? Well, I want moles of product. What else do I need? I'm going to have to want my limiting reactant and I need to know excess, amount of excess. What we tend to do in the questions on a test, we'll step this out. We'll step them out and ask it like in a part A, part B, part C to help you kind of be organized. So first thing, let's balance that equation. So that gives me four to three. 
okay, this isn't one-to-one. -one. I do not have equal amounts. So I can't just look at this and say, which one are you going to run out of? Now, hopefully, some of you can kind of, on my logic, can see it and say, well, I need more aluminum than oxygen, because this is what this is telling me. I need four moles of aluminum for every three moles. So I am going to predict that aluminum is going to run out of first. But let's see if you're right. Let's look at the math when it's easy so we can see. So you just do the stoichiometry for each of them. So for every three moles of aluminum, go to your product, because that's what the question is asking. Well, I know that I get two moles of aluminum oxide for every four moles of aluminum used. Or you get two over four of one half of the amount, you would get 1.5 moles of aluminum. So what you are saying, if I have all the oxygen I need, how much alumina, how much aluminum oxide can I make with that? And then we're going to do the same thing with the oxygen. Well, what if, we're doing a little what if here, what if I had three moles of oxygen and I had all of the aluminum I needed, how much could I make? for every three moles of oxygen. And this is a two to three ratio. So look at your threes cancel. So you could make two moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, so you have two amounts. Don't add them together. Don't do anything weird on the amount. You're comparing which one is smaller. Well, 1.5 is smaller. This is your answer. I only have enough aluminum to make 1.5 moles. Now, if it asks me how many grams, then I would do my next step and go to grams using the molar mass. But this just asks for moles and I would be done. So this is one answer. Check. Right there. Check. We just answered. Okay. Then it said, okay, what is the limiting reactant? This is not a reactant. This is a product. Do not just put that. You will get it wrong. You have a 50-50 chance here. Which one made the less amount, least amount? So aluminum is the limiting reactant because you ran out of your aluminum. So it's either aluminum or oxygen is your choice for limiting reactants. Okay, check. That's your another question. Now it said, okay, how much excess is there left of the oxygen? Well, to calculate excess, write yourself a note here, to calculate excess, it's kind of like spending money. If, I'm, if your mom asks for your change back, you need to figure out how much you used. So to calculate excess, you first have to calculate the amount used. Wow, calcul let's try this again. Calculate the amount used. My abbreviations. So what you're kind of asking yourself, and I probably didn't give you enough space, I apologize. If I have three moles of aluminum, how much oxygen does that take? Well, I need three moles of oxygen for every four moles of aluminum. So that means I would use up 2.25 moles of oxygen. This is another way you could do this check first. Some people do this, and I know and definitely in AP we kind of do it this way first. You check this first. You say, okay, well, I need 2.25 moles of oxygen. I have three moles, so I have more oxygen than I need to react with that. That's how I know that my oxygen is also going to be in excess. One way you can also look at it. Well, this is how much I used. So then, well, I had, so this was my initial in the beginning. I had three moles. 2.25 were used in the reaction. So I have 0.75, which would rally around up to eight moles used, left, excuse me, excess. I don't know why I cannot write today. Excess. So that's how much moles you have left over how much you have left over. Okay, let's try one more as we're going through this. How many moles of nitrogen monoxide, okay, are produced when, so look at, nine moles of ammonia are heated with 10 moles of oxygen. They're different amounts here, but they're giving you two reactants. That's how you know it's a 
limiting reactant problem. Okay, don't forget to balance this. Now if we did first, we'd say that this is a 2. We can try that. 2, 2, but that would give me a 3, and that gives me an odd amount. It's like, nope, this is why we use pencils. No way we should be using a pen on stoichiometry at all. So let's try. That even didn't work. We're going to have to go to our next even. So now I know I have six. Oh, this is like that question on the quiz, wasn't it? Test. <clears throat> so then I have 10. That means I'm going to have to have a five. So how many moles of nitrogen monoxide are produced? Well, let's just react them both. React them out. So I have four moles of ammonia and I want to go to nitrogen monoxide. Well, it's a four moles to four moles ratio. So yay, that just means I get, whoops, sorry, this isn't should be four moles. I apologize. This should be nine moles. This just should be what I'm starting with. I had four on the head after balancing there. Sorry, four in the brain. This should be nine moles. See, this is why we don't use a pen. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you why we don't do these in pen. I can erase too. So nine moles, four to four, it stays the same. So that means you would get nine moles of nitrogen monoxide. Now remember, this is saying, okay, in theory, in, per, in pretend, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to pretend I have all the oxygen I need to react this. How much could I make? This is a could. You're just really doing kind of a check and guess here. Well, if I use 10, the 10 moles of my oxygen, how much could I make? Same thing. If I had all the ammonia I needed. So it's a 4 to 5. <clears throat> so 10, they'll cancel out. I would only get 8 moles of nitrogen monoxide. So do not fall into the habit and say, oh look at 9 is less than 10, therefore I know my ammonia is going to be less. That only only works if it's 1 to 1. It's not 1 to 1, you don't get that shortcut. Don't try to guess it. Not saying that we always try to trick you, but not a good idea to always guess just the smallest amount. Do the math. So what does that mean? This is my answer. This is my amount of product. That's what I'm going to um, box. This is the amount I get to use. Let's go on the question one more. What is my limiting reactant? So I would say the limiting reactant is oxygen. That's my reactant. Then it said, okay, how much do you have left over? So remember, before you can figure out how much is left over, you have to figure out how much you used. So, wow, that's a straight line. So how much used is what we're calculating. So it's also a 4 to 4 ratio, 4 moles of my ammonia to every mole of my oxygen. So that means, <coughs> no it's not, excuse me, 4 to 5. I knew it was the same. It's the same as my product. That's where my same was coming from. So it means I need 8 moles of ammonia. I was thinking same and I just said the wrong thing, same, sorry. It is the same amount because this was the equal. So again, this was how much used, used up. How much did you have to start with? Well, you had nine moles, you used up eight moles, so therefore you have one mole of excess ammonia going through there. Okay, number four, looking down there, is the same concept, but this time you're just going to go that one more step to gram. So I want you to practice it. We want you to practice that. That's going to be a good place for us to start. Then number four. Also, at the bottom of the, both of these pages on the Cornell notes, kind of do a summary. What do you think is important for you as you're working these that you need to remember as we're doing our limiting and excess reactants? We will see you tomorrow.